Yeah, definitely. And the thing is, with that back natural, as we just said, tank drops can be so dangerous there because they, they can just siege up with a dropship, obviously, and just siege up and do so much damage. Will, do you reckon they're actually going to go for that, or will they go for the, the expansion on the front? I mean, I think a lot of players are going to favor the back if they open up Banshees or if they open up with some sort of Marauder play, so they have the units to kill off those destructible rocks. I think more tank Viking players will want to steer forward so they can get control of, of the front of their base. And we'll look at that in just a minute. But we are here in game three of the little one. Oh, it looks like there was a disconnection, so we will be rehosting. But at the front of your base, there is a very, very small ramp. And it's tempting to take your back expansion because you want to get a very, very safe base up, but you can get contained way more easily. A lot of times you'll see players have huge arcs of tanks, all of them just in range of that ramp. So anything that walks down gets immediately killed, and it's too hard to try to get around the map because you only have two bases worth of income. Yeah, definitely. And, and the way that people try to counter that is they try to get all these Marauders and try to feed these Marauder pushes with the stim to take down these tanks, but with a brilliant spread out tank line, it actually does not work because these, all these tanks are doing damage from different angles. Mm -hmm. And the Marauders are running in, then they've got to change direction, then they've got to change direction again to take these tanks. And whilst that's going on, these tanks are just leading siege all on these Marauders. And that's what Nada actually did extremely well last game, is he had this brilliant line, and his siege tanks were not clumped together where these Marauders oh, yeah, can just do a ton so of damage good. straight away. But that's what made me so amazed at Little One's nuke placement, because he was actually out of range of the tanks in a lot of those circumstances. So I love the way that he can just make those Marauders work, because too often people get into these situations where they create these imaginary circles in their head of this counters that, counters that. And if you have a lot of Marauders, you might say, well, he has tanks, so I am countered, and you'll and try to do something else. But Little One's saying, well, I have all these marauder Marauders. How do I make them? continue to be useful, and using nuke pushing was the way to do it. Yeah, definitely. What, what I would have thought that TLO could have done last game, when he was in lead with the Vikings, wouldn't it have been really smart of him to get a medivac and actually drop Marauders along the tank line rather than uh -huh, running yeah, into yeah. the tank line? He did have the Viking control, so he had the complete control of the air, and that probably would have been a pretty smart thing to do. And we do have Nada spawning here in the bottom left as the red Terran. In the top left, we do have the little one as the blue Terran. And as we were saying before, getting control of this thin ramp, look at all this space where you can get contained right out here. That's very dangerous. But uh, that's why a lot of players do you know, not really like taking this back expansion first. They'll take that second after they get their main natural up. Well, the spawning positions actually favor Tilo. If, we, if they do decide to take the back rocks, if we yeah, look at the yeah. distance for Tilo, to the cliff to above his natural. Here, yeah, He's going to be dropped so easily. And compare that to, you know, Nada. He has to travel all the way up there. Yeah, and then yeah. drop down. It's so far away. This little one is making a supply depot. Again, I love it when it's on the inside of the minerals. On the outside, it's very vulnerable to Banshees. Nada also, excuse me, doing the exact same thing in his base. And uh, nothing out of the ordinary. No proxying. This is a very, very close map. In terms of distance-wise, whoa, a little bit of a misclick there. Uh, by Nada. Very easy to make that mistake when you know, you're on the big stage, but definitely not the way you want to begin a match. Yeah, definitely. And, and Nada actually needs to, I think, I think compared to the previous games, I think he should scout before the barracks finishes. He's not yeah. actually getting inside TLO's base, and, it, and he's not scouting anything. TLO always has these Marines out, and every, it doesn't actually matter what spawning position. The only way Nada's actually going to get inside the base if he scouts in the right direction on a small map. It's not even technically worth using the scout. And, you know, watching Nada play is very reminiscent of Idra because Idra has this big repetition, uh, doesn't like to make a lot of big deviations in his play early on. And we can see that Nada, I think that's a lot of the motivation for why he's not scouting. He's saying, well, I'm going to be going tank with the, with the reactor for double Vikings early on, and that's just what I'm going to do. So there's no reason to do, do, do any uh, earlier scouting. Oh, look at this. Exactly the same supply depot placement every time as well. He loves this two supply depot just above the Vespian guys that are right there. I mean, everything from Nada is exactly the same every game. Like you said, not only the build, the building placements as well. Uh-huh, and it looks like this SCV of Little One is going to get repelled. Nothing too uh, uncharacteristic from either player. Both of them just, oh, well, that's a little bit uncharacteristic from TLO. He is getting the very fast tech lab. We've seen a lot of players in TVT favor getting a Marauder out early because it does bolster a lot of early pushes and block a lot of early pushes. It will, all right, it's not an early Marauder, it's a Reaper. Back to you, Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> it is an early Reaper indeed. We have not seen Nitro packs, though, being researched. 
I wonder how useful the, the Re Reapers could actually be extremely useful against Nada because he only does build these couple of Marines in the top. But actually, look and at this. Oh, look at this. Nada's Two bears changing play his by style. Nada, and here's the Marauder coming out. It will not be able to beat this Reaper. This Reaper from. Oh, look, this Reaper from the little one is rallied to that back expansion area exactly as you were saying before. It's going to get a sneak peek into the main of Nada. Nada hasn't begun researching Concussive Shell or Stim. But whenever you get two barracks this early, it generally signifies they're going to do an early, early, early attack. Uh, definitely. With these two gas vices, I actually think he probably should be looking to get upgrades straight away. That's the reason why these two Vesemine guys are being done right now. And look, he's getting a second tech up right now. It looks like he might be going for a very fast Marauder push. But here comes Little One with the Reaper. He will get a chance to look into the main, but he needs to not overvalue SCVs. Scouting is equally important at this stage. He takes out one, two SCVs. He's going to be able to get a third. He sees the Marauder, so now he's going to be swinging around. But, oh, can he get another one? That's four kills right now. He was able to get with that Reaper. That's a good benefit. But again, still no knowledge from the little one as to what his opponent is doing. Oh, he didn't actually see that. Oh, oh, that's actually a big... Actually, rather than... Even though he did take four SCVs, I would have rather TLO to actually scout rather than getting the fourth yeah. SCV. That would have yeah, been a yeah. lot more beneficial to him. But then, like we were talking about before, Nada like, plays like Hydra and uses the same build over and over. And maybe Tilo is thinking this, but Nada's actually pushing out. He doesn't have stim research, but this push right now, and we look in Tilo's base, he doesn't have any units. He, is, he has like three mowers and one marine. This push by Nada could be actually de deadly to Tilo. But no upgrades from Nada at all. He wants to be able to have a follow through after this. There is a Hellion coming out. The Hellion will be able to tank a little bit of damage, but the Hellion dies immediately, and suddenly Little One realizes he has to bring all his units back. The SCVs from Little One are going to have to pop out into the fray as well. Big push by Nada, and here comes target firing on all the Marauders, and one Marauder from the Little One doing its own thing. Very big mistake there from the Little One, but he does manage to defend somehow miraculously, not really losing very many units at all, and now getting the medevac out. We see a starport coming up from Nada. I can't believe that attack didn't go that well. Yeah, look at this now. Actually, look at TLO. He's actually extremely scared about this. Look, he's actually got all these SCVs. Now he's moving the back. But he was scared of more Marauders coming in. He thought Nada was pushing kind of an all-in style. He's even building the bunker. He will be able to salvage that and get 100% of the funds for back. But look, he's actually scared right now. But, it, I mean, it's kind of incredible, though, that in the midst of all that, the little one is ahead by 15 food. That's very unusual this early on in the game to have that sort of significant lead on your opponent. But apparently the effects of the Reaper are, you know, coming to fruition as we get later in the game. And there goes Nada again emphasizing the double Viking, but it's not going to matter because there's a Hellion and a Marine coming in the back. Little one hates stopping attacking at any point. Yeah, every time. Tilo is oh, immediately taking out one SCP, immediately taking out two. There's another third vulnerable one doing a lot of damage now, target firing. This big clump. Oh my god, that's such a huge cluster. He needs to be careful. Oh, if he can just get one more shot off, he is coming back. This is the tight pack of SCVs. He's trying to get just one key shot off. He will be able to do a ton of damage. Look at that dropship, Michael. That is awesome. That is so cool because there was actually no anti-air. And he's dropping, picking up. And before the was actually... He because the medivac is faster than the Marauders, therefore he's been able to drop and pick. Look at that, that is so funky there by TLO. Yeah, I mean, he's dropping the Hellion, and when the Marauders fire, he's picking the Hellion up as the Concussive Shell is mid-flight. And then um, the Concussive Shells don't do any damage to the Hellion once they've picked up. So, I mean, great, great play. Going to the Income tab, we can see that a full 10 SCVs ahead for the little one. And an expansion going down at the back door. Not going to try to knock that down. Instead, just going to go directly for the push. Marauder in the center for Nada. Going to get pulled back as well. And look at TLO right now. He knows that all these SCVs are on half health, basically. There is like 25 SCVs on half health. And he has two Vikings to help defend the Marauder. And he's got a drop ship with two Hellions. And if they get, if they actually hit these SCVs, they're going to go down. As I said, at half health, they're going to die so fast. And here comes the push at Little One from the front and the drop at the back. This is all geared towards killing those SCVs. And here the Hellions are going to be able to drop. Nada has almost nowhere to run there. Some, you know, a few key shots. He's able to kill one SCV. The Vikings do take out the, the medevac. And Little One coming in the front side as well. Nada in complete total disorganization. Look, pulling all the units back. And here come the Rotters. They're going to take out the tech lab. So that's going to cut into the Marauder production of Nada. And look, Nada now bringing his Marauders to kill Little One. And Little one just going to attack the back all over again. Yeah, he is in such a lead right now, Day 9. He's got 31 SCVs compared to 18 of Nada. This harassment style is really putting Nada on the back foot. 
but unfortunately, Little One does not have that much barracks production, so Nada's forces are a little bit larger, but oh no, Nada engaging this before he has vision, so Little One able to target fire and do initially more damage, but I can't tell who's going to be able to win this fight. Good target firing by Little One, and somehow Little One's going to come out on top. He should not have been able to come out on top by great target firing. He has control of the center still, and the back uh, destructible rocks are almost done, and Little One just having a big, big lead right now. Yeah, and he's going to go to the back of the base and get rid of these destructible rocks. He's going to take that so he can get his natural down. Nada does has this extra command center, and the longer this stays up, the more energy it's going to build. And he actually might be able to get back into the game in terms of SCV count, because the mules bring in so much extra resources. Uh -huh. And going to the unit counting station, we do see 33 SCVs for Little One, 24 for Nada, and a lot, lot, lot of stuff just for the Little One. He has Medivacs, Vikings, Marauders, Hellions, generally excellent mix, but that expansion is a little bit later for the Little One. Yeah, and Nada is actually pulling back in SCVs. This command center has been up for long. Only now is uh, Tilo's orbital command being put down. And look at these SCVs, they like want to go back to the main. Tilo's like, no, you have to mine here, guys. You have to stay here. <laughs> So it looks like uh, more Marauders continue to be made for Little One. Pretty even production capacity by both players, especially with the um, reactors on both the starports. Going to be a few more SCVs, excuse me, a few more Marauders out here for the Little One. And oh, again, the medevac drops are what are setting uh, Little One apart in this game. And whoa, is that the good game? It looks like Nada didn't realize or didn't have any way to come through in this game. He was getting harassed way too much and just decided to say GG and leave. Yeah, I mean, he was on the back foot the entire game. He was so far behind. That one push with the Marauders really did throw him back. When he went in there, Marauders into the middle with that Zell Naga Tower and he lost all the Marauders in a battle that he should have won. He was on the back foot and couldn't come back into the game. He knew he was behind and he just really couldn't pull back. Yeah, I mean, I mean, having that big of a lead in SCV count is just huge. So it becomes increasingly difficult to, to just be able to get back in the game. And, you know, a lot of people just seem to think that the game is won in these huge epic battles. But so much of it is about chipping your opponent away and getting that eventual lead. And we're doing, you can just see amazing creativity by the little one to use completely unique styles in all three games. And actually, just th this is only a show match. But if you think about it, this is TLO showing Koreans this is how we play European style. He is going to Korea on Monday to fight for a place in GSL to play in the huge tournament that Korea are hosting. And this is this is great. This is awesome because he is he is able to bring down Nada, a StarCraft legend, and basically he is telling everybody I can play with Koreans, I can beat Koreans, and this is fantastic news for TLO. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's, it's, it's always great watching the little one play because no matter what situation he's in, in a tournament, whether it be, you know, getting to the finals, like in the Kaspersky Cup, and, you know, playing an epic series against Sen, or even getting to the quarterfinals here and getting eliminated, he is always so fun to watch play, and he's always the player you want to be rooting for. He is so creative, and I just, I really do, Dana, I really do love his aggression. A lot of Terran players like to play this macro game and play for a 40, 50 minute game, but TLO, Dropship Micro was fantastic in that game, coming in with Moors at the front at the same time, putting Nada, Nada, I repeat that, Nada under huge amounts of pressure, yeah. it's a brilliant play. Yeah, and that's one thing I think that um, a lot of Terran players are going to start incorporating more of is the medevac, because I think my mind was blown in that first game that yeah. actually crashed and we had to replay that marine drop with the medevac. It, it just came at right at the worst time possible for Nada. His Vikings weren't quite out yet. His first tank had only just finished. So I just think that, that is definitely a new coming evolution in this matchup. So let's go get interviews with the players up on the main stage with Dennis.